Welcome to TTP, Turnbuckle Talk Podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Dirty Blondes. Dirty Blondes is a bar located in the heart of Blackpool, famous for their banging tunes, cocktails and 18-inch pizzas. The only place to get pizza as big as your table across the Bad Coast. If you're ever in Blackpool, check them out. They're on Facebook and on Instagram. That's Dirty Blondes Blackpool. Welcome to TTP, Tembuckle Talk Podcast. I'm joined by the Scottish stud. His favourite song is You Can't Throw the Granny Off the Bus. Mr John Dugan, how are we doing? <laughs> Hello. Uh, you nearly got that right, but go on. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm running out of Scottish phrases, you see. <laughs> it's You Can't Shove Your Granny Off a Bus. Oh, there we go. There we go. Uh, today we've got a special guest. We've got the owner and promoter of PCW, Mr Stephen Flodder. How you doing? You're right. Thanks for having me on. No, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for coming on. It's it's a pleasure. Yeah, no, no, anytime. Yeah, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind doing all these things and that. You know, I weren't planning on doing podcasts for a while, but then uh, obviously the spot opened up when the other guy went batshit. So, <laughs> 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 well, we'll get onto that um, shortly. But um, to be honest, I actually don't know too much about you. I mean, me and John know quite a lot about PCW, but you yourself, mm. you're a bit of a mystery. Really? That's fucked my life forever on social media. You know, I just thought everyone knew what I do. <laughs> I can't get any privacy to me, anything. Um, like early on, I made that mistake of adding fans to like my wrestling profiles, you know, really early on. Right. And now 10 years later, it's just too late. You know, all the fans know everything about me and out, my relationship, everything. You know, It's usually plastered all over Twitter or somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. Well, I mean, I, I don't exactly <laughs> know how you kind of, how PCW came about. I know it started, what, 2011? Yeah. So 10 years ago, yeah. So, but, well, it was. But, I mean, yeah. how did it come around? Yeah, well, it was. Um, so, basically, my, my trade was um, pub management. And, you know, I'm running pubs, uh, relief management, different bars, things like that. So, I'm, I was used to managing events, uh, you know, managing banquets, functions, various, like, various food kind of events. When it's food, you've got a certain, you know, this has got to be right, that's got to be right, you've got to have orders, uh, wrestling, it just kind of translates. Um, what I also did was I travelled the country watching wrestling shows for about three, four years. Uh, I was like a super fan, you know, I went around the world, you know, different places, meet other wrestlers. Uh, so I was already fully aware who the best wrestlers were in the UK, what the strengths were, what the weaknesses were. Uh, and also with my brain for business, I already knew what kind of, you know, business models I could set up. And uh, so I went in. At the time when PCW started, there was a company called GPW who was still going, Future Shock who was still going, and a company in Morgan called XWA. But they only run four shows a year, and the other two did seven shows a year. So in the Northwest, you only had 18 shows a year. You know, that was it. Uh, massive gap. Yeah, massive gap in the market. Mm. I, yeah, I come in, uh, I took gambles on different things, the Americans and, like, I completely changed the model with the Americans where I basically I convinced the Americans to give me the money that they make on photos and in exchange for paying them a little bit more. Um, so then the, I'd have a queue of 100 people paying a tenner to get a picture with, say, Ted DiBiossi and that would pay for the flight. So instantly I had like this new business model. I wasn't, it worked out, I wasn't really paying any flights and any of the talents. You know, I was getting hundreds of people in and we just hit the ground running. Yeah, and you've had some massive talents. I mean, thanks to PCW, me and John have seen Ryback, Chris Masters, Billy mm. Gunn. Who else we've seen? We've seen so many big names, haven't we, John? Uh, yeah, everybody. Uh, Mr. Anderson and Scotty Too Horror. Yeah, and for them to be in the Northwest, it was like, I mean, it, it was unbelievable. It was like a first for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It, it, to be honest, it was mental. You know, it was... I used to love the old type of shows, you know, it was, which it was. We've kind of evolved over the years, I mean. But the pressure was hard. I'd be looking at my missus at the time and I'd be like, oh, no, a uh, week to go, um, totting up the number, I need to raise another 10 grand. And she'd just look at me like, what the hell? <laughs> 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 you know, you know I mean? Thinking, oh, this ain't going to work. But I always found a way, always, you know, don't get me wrong, we didn't we don't lose money every show, you know. Some shows we make money, some, some shows, you know, you don't. That's promoting. Um, but the fact is, we've gone 10 years, we don't, mm. you know, we've got a sustainable business model, and you know, all different revenue streams with 
free TV deals, um, international streaming deals, all sorts. You know, and that's the way to go. If you're relying on ticket money and just try to start up now, which you'd have to be an idiot, wouldn't you, to start an events company up when people don't want to go to events? <laughs> I'm still oh, yeah. kind of. <laughs> <laughs> um so how I know we've sort of touched on it, but how did you how did it start? How did like how, how did you find the premises? Who was um, your first wrestler that you signed? Uh well I basically um I used to go shows with a really good friend at the time called he's called Ben Old uh, and he set up Southside Wrestling. Uh, which was like quite a big deal. Rev Pro's bought them out, and that they, they've gone gone with Lazarus last year. But then I set up PCW. Uh, the first actual show we actually run two shows under a different banner. Uh, the first show was actually ten years ago, a few days ago, uh, on the twenty seventh, right. which was a clash at the Disco, uh, which in Evoke, the nightclub just across the road from me now. Uh, basically, it, I I used to go out drinking a lot, you know. So all the venue managers knew me, uh, so they did me favors. Uh, which the very first show we got 56 people uh, because I was working with somebody uh, it was hard I'm quite I'm quite dominant where I want to put my kind of way of cross and when I'm clashing with someone else and sharing power it didn't work uh, you know we, we tried a second time at Preston College where we had like Doug Williams Nigel McGuinness uh, Dave Taylor uh, that broke even we didn't lose anything we got about 200 fans in that did alright but I wanted more Um so I reached out, I got a hold of Colt Cabana on the first show. Uh, so the very first piece of the show, Colt Cabana. And at the time, his podcast was massive. His podcast was like one of the very few wrestling podcasts before. There was like a, a thousand fan ones about. Um, and everyone, and him plugging our events on his podcast, actually, I think we saw about 250 tickets for that one. They were quite busy, you know, what was good. Um, and then after that, uh, the venue itself, it was a bit naive to like events, wrestling and everything. Um, Preston's a bit run down. Uh, so they had Preston Friday night bar prices at the next two events. Uh, well, when fans are turning up and it's 80p a drink, they were getting absolutely paralytic. They were screaming, going bonkers. We were carrying fans out mid-show. <laughs> <laughs> it was such an environment. Yeah, there was a famous guy, Richie, I think he was. He kept like buying a front row seat and they get that pissed and then fall asleep on front row. <laughs> oh, get him off camp. Get him off camp. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it just, it just got to change with the years, God. you know. That was the culture back then, everything everyone was excited. Then I drift then I drifted into like the American market. Uh, and then when the American market fizzled out, because there's only so many photos you want with people, and it loses the novelty. Uh, once I did that, then I opened the academy and the school to develop my own talent. You know, now that we've got talent mm. that are coming from that, like Sheik Al Shah, you know, people like that who are like really coming to the prime now, but we'll actually see the proper benefits of having that facility. Yeah, I think with that academy, I mean, I think it was ahead of the time you've homegrown these wrestlers. And then not only that, you've done the, the white collar wrestling. Um, yeah, that's it. Well, the white collar's been amazing. I mean, I, I literally, I invented white collar wrestling, basically. Obviously, there's white collar boxing. Um, but what it is, I trademarked it. I own the trademark, the actual, um, okay. how it's actually done. Because it's eight weeks training, and then you actually fight a pro wrestler. So it's more like, you know, it's strictly where someone's guiding you through a dance. Mm. Not these celebrities can dance it. It's just a blag because they've got someone guiding it through it. You know, it's easy when you've got someone whispering yeah. your ear, twirl, turn to the left, turn to the right. You know, it's easy. <laughs> And that's, well, I'll say it's easy. It's not easy. You still become, you know, you still got to learn, train. But it makes it, a lot of the risk factor, it, it really reduces it. Uh, and that, that's been, like, so successful. I'm actually um, setting up a website because uh, I'm going to franchise that out across the country. Hmm. Is that why I'm you've changed well. the name? Because you've gone from uh, Crescent City Wrestling to... Um, Go, I can't think what the new name now is. All right, Pro so, Championship, yeah. so, Pro so Championship Wrestling. Preston City Wrestling. Then we'll go to Blackpool, and everyone's ripping our posters down and not really. I'm like, yeah, we can't be Preston City Wrestling because we're running Preston, Manchester, Liverpool, at all right. over. So then we became PCW UK. Um, and I wanted to signal a new start 
Uh, I wanted to start again with a TV, everything like that. And I wanted a bit of a... Because everyone who's casual with wrestling, if you say PCW, they go, what does it mean? So it's still Preston City Wrestling. So I wanted to, uh, what does it mean? So it's like pro championship wrestling. Uh, so I thought I'd start afresh with that side of things. Uh, plus, I got divorced, so I bought myself a new company and then <laughs> move things around. You know what you do. <laughs> but no, no. So yes, we're just obviously just beginning with like the pro championship wrestling kind of branding. Uh, but I don't mind PC we all pro championship wrestling. But I don't know. just it just some you know it just shows that the times are changing. Which if you see all the graphics and the branding and all everything putting out like right now. Uh, the new roster, it, it really does like feel like it's a new a new start. Mm. Yeah, I think the people's going to be eager to go to live shows as well, especially after the last twelve months. We just need live wrestling. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Um, you know, I can't wait. Which I've got July twenty third. I build it. It's like obviously it's not. It is. It's an academy fundraiser of such because I've still been paying full rent on the academy, uh, which I've just about kind of had money to cover it from different avenues. Uh, but I want to upgrade things like the mats and things like that because they're all, when they sit there, all cold and damp and wet and everything, I've just got to rip them out and put new ones in. Um, so it's a bit of a fundraiser, but at the same time, it's a test. Uh, so we want, you know, none of us have worked a show, run a show for God knows how long. Uh, I didn't want to announce, this is our first show back and then 500 people will come. And then... So the rope snaps on the ring or the cameras break yeah, or yeah. something. I just I want to get everything perfect. So I've announced this little academy show, for, you know, and then, you know, 250 tickets have gone. And I'm thinking, oh, no, this is going <laughs> to... Everything I planned, it wasn't <laughs> supposed to be. It's not going to end up, yeah. So that's going to end up crazy. It really is. All right, four months to go, 250 tickets sold already. Oh, it's going to be mad. So, just going back to kind of... Um, when you first started building this brand, yeah. um, was there any point that you thought it was going to crash and burn? Or was you always because you always kind of, especially early early days, kind of on that thin line before you finally get you know the brand going? No, all promoters gamble, but you got to believe in what you're doing. If you don't believe that you can pull it off, then there's no point trying. You know, you've always got to believe. That's that's exactly how it is. Got football managers, you think they go into any games believing that they don't have a chance of winning. You've got to kind of have that mentality, motivate everyone mm. to do the best, and then motivate the fans that they're watching the best. You know, everyone's it's a magic show. You know, everything's got to kind yeah. of push together. I, mean, I think it does help that you have a really good kind of reputation, not only with fans but with wrestlers as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, it, it can it goes it it's, it goes up and down. To be honest, uh, obviously. I'm prone to making mistakes. Everyone's prone to making mistakes. That's, you know, um, some things work, some things don't. Some things kind of like, you know, get a bit of backlash, uh, which you always do everything with good intentions, you know, but it you've just got to keep trying. You've just got to try your best. But literally some people have the talent to make things work and some don't. You're, you're promoting events, but it's also a psychology. You've got to know what people want. You've got to evolve with the times. Yeah. You know, make changes when things don't work. You know, if you if you don't if you're not experienced in leading people, you know, it shouldn't be a promoter. You shouldn't be working in events. You shouldn't be in charge of people's safety. You know, some of these people they sat in the front room and think, "Oh, I'm going to set up a wrestling company." No, no, go help at a wrestling company. Go learn <laughs> things. Go learn anything. You know, if I, I'm not to say like there's any sort of discredit to people who have, if, if you're a postman, you are not used to interacting with people. You are not used to you know, motivating people. You're not used to negotiating with people. You know, there's certain skill sets. If you're working in hospitality, someone that's fast-paced and, you know, you're forever negotiating with suppliers or sorting customer problems or so, there's always something, you know. Mm. Um, you, you've got to kind of have something you can translate from one to the other. You know, it is. I feel yeah. like this is a good uh, segue to talk about yeah. um, the elephant in the room because <laughs> I think it needs to be addressed. Of course, of course. Um, it's a journalistic um, view to kind of mention it. Um, no, so, no, no. No. Yeah, so there's, there's recently been a brand that's kind of started up. Um, and me and John were saying just before this podcast, I, I just don't think they've gone about it in the right way. No, no. Um, I'll give you the backstory of how he's fallen out with me, which is so trivial. Okay. okay. Uh, 
so I booked a guy called uh, Terry Taylor, Terence. Uh, and basically, he was front center on the poster. But also, I'm looking at the poster, and there's people who haven't trained for seven years. The people who've only trained for 14 weeks, four years ago on this poster. And there's people who I don't even think have ever trained at all, and they've just blagged him. Um, and when I see that, I don't want PCW associated with anything like that. So I said to, so I said to Terence, I said, look, I am not announcing you as part of PCW. I don't want to use you on Blackfield dates, I said, because you're on this show here, which will make us look like a lesser company. I didn't ask him to pull off, you know. Um, it was his decision, and he thought, well, actually, no, he's right. He's pulled off the show. And when he pulled off the show, I announced him because he was free to be announced then. You know, he's not on the other show. It's not a problem. Mm. Uh, and then the other promoter guy, I uh, can't remember his name, he then did some weird promo video in his dirty house. Which I'm not saying, I'm nothing against dirty house and that, but it's always got to be... <laughs> It's, you're setting the scene, like so. You've got wrestling belts in the background, all that lot. You're not mm. gonna have a toilet in the background or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so he did. He, he then cut a promo on me, very, very personal, very nasty. Try to mock my name, mock me, mock everything, just out of order. And so what I did, I sent a message to the page. I actually really, really nice. And I said, look, you need to get some experience help. You've got a lot of untrained talent. You've got this, you've got that. So get someone who knows what they're doing. Get people who can help you. And then set screenshots of people tweeting, saying about his promotion and experienced talent. And, set, and then I ended it with, get some help from somebody experienced. Uh, and then got blocked. <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Which, you know. And then next thing you know, he's then keeps slagging me up in his group chat, which is so some of the things that were, you know, it was horrendous what he was saying. Uh, which I think you just thought it were a game. Uh, that's why I asked online for his address, you know, which <laughs> I asked online for his address, not to go around necessarily and give him a slap, uh, because it needs talking some sense into. I can't play these games of promos back and forth. Mm. It's not SmackDown mm. Hero. It's not general <laughs> manager mode, you know. Yeah. It's my business. I'm trying to earn a living here. I don't need distractions from some guy who's just absolutely delusional. He lasted 19 days as a promoter. No, I'm sorry. I can't think of any other promoter on record who've gone full circle and absolutely batshit in that time. The Shockmaster of wrestling. Yeah, yeah big time. <laughs> he's now used the mental health card. He's now hiding behind his missus. The company's still sort of going. Every, all the talent have pulled off. But Can I ask you a question? Uh, Did he um, ask your permission to kind of start? Because we, we spoke to um, Zach Knight and he mm. said that other promotions asked him for permission just out of, you know, territorial kind of respect, mm. um, which I think is a, a respectful thing to do, especially in wrestling. You know what I mean? It goes back I years. That's just what you do, Of course, of course. I mean, I've put, yeah. I put so, so much effort into, you know, foul course, kind of the wrestling scene. When I started, there was no, nothing there. There was a company going in, getting 30 people at Blackpool Tower, and then they went, you know, that they left. And there was nothing in Blackpool for ages. You know, mm. I, I literally just built it up again, built it up, built it up until the point it gets good numbers. Uh, WWE can see what I'm doing, and they have now see that there's a wrestling ba fan base in Blackpool, and then they've mm. gone there. Mm. You know, it's it's what they do. WWE they look where the, the market is, and then you know. But no, I, I mean, I don't even need permission. You know, I don't even need to get permission. They don't even need to. It's not about asking. It's just if you're gonna attack someone, just attack anybody, but not. Like, I wouldn't start giving shit to WWE. I'm not going to start doing that about I'm running Blackpool. Mm. Yes, I might have run a show called Overtake on Takeover Day, but that was just because it got loads of hits on, <laughs> <laughs> on Google searches. Everyone <laughs> <laughs> searched Takeover and they got Peace W Overtake. <laughs> but no, it, it, it just went about it. Everything, everything the just wrong way. You know, it, what it was, he booked a lot of poor talent and I'm. I've no filter sometimes, and these people who aren't trained and untrained, I've told them straight, get to a school, and, all, and, and they've been in his ear and swayed his, his views on PCW. Oh, I treat talent bad. If I treat talent bad, all the best in the country won't be messaging me daily what it's worth for me. Mm. You know, it doesn't work like that. If, if, if you're a guy who's trained for 14 weeks, and then that's years ago, and you're on shows, and I'm saying that like, he's dangerous to people, then of course you're going to have a poor opinion of me, you know, but... I end up there and telling people that because they need warning. <laughs> it's just yeah. people people need to be trained at school. 
you know, you watch videos of these certain talent and that, they hurt themselves every match. You know, they don't know what they're doing. It's just... It, I mean, me and John have said this a hundred times, but, like, wrestling is so... It's so frail, wrestling. Mm. And, you know what I mean? One bad mistake and it can tarnish the reputation of wrestling. Yeah. And you, me and John just want to kind of uphold yeah. the British wrestling kind of... You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I, I understand completely where you're coming from. That's it, that's it. But, you know, I just honestly don't get the whole situation with him, the personal side of things, you know. I don't get why he come on the attack of me. I honestly think he's got a few underlying issues that he just... But again, it's like to me, old thing where I said, he, people who shouldn't be leading people should not be running a, a promotion. Uh, he didn't get it. And uh, mm. then obviously the new thing that's come to light, which I've been sent off his talent. Uh, he's got another profile, which is a racist profile. Um, yeah. England, yeah. Uh, British Lives Matter and all this lot. He's named after his two dogs, uh, which obviously there's a sinister side to him. It's better that he's actually been nipped in the bud and, and he's gone 19 days in, you know, than anything else. Yeah. If he carried on promoting, with what he said about me, I'd have sent him a solicitor's letter for damages. You know, I, I weren't going to mess about with him. I weren't going to waste all my time. He's just, uh, just a weird guy. Just, I can't understand why he just thought... Yeah, I mean, all wrestling side mm -hmm. is quite serious. Um, yeah. It's not really what you want either, is it, when you, you're about to get back into, like, running yeah. wrestling shows. For someone just to be like... Attacking you for no reason. It's it's, it's like from it's like de it's desperation from his part. Yeah. He's obviously thought. Yeah. How can I get publicity? I'll go for the biggest name in the area. But he's like like we said, he's gone the totally wrong way about it. As um, if he thinks he's. No. It's one of them. I don't know what you, what you... It's one of them. Do you do you fight back, or do you turn a blind eye, let it grow? Let him have a few absolutely disastrous shows that fans talk about in the area, going all oh, the horrible wrestling shows in the in this area is horrible, you know. Or somebody gets injured and then it ends up in the local paper. Somebody hurts at wrestling show, mm. which is with the Blackpool Gazette, which is the same area I run, you mm. know. And it's, it's that thing again. Blackpool is so famous for you know the wrestling in the, you know the sixties and seventies at the Pleasure Beach, you know, and all this. Mm. You know, it is a magical town for wrestling. And we can we want to keep that magic there. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's but, it. And there's definitely magic yeah. in that tower circus. You know, it's um, there is there's something about it, isn't there? That's a venue. You know, I I, I mm -hmm. love it, but it's amazing. You're giving me some good segues. Yeah, let's uh, move on to something a bit positive. <laughs> um, so you come into the Blackpool Tower, which yeah. um, 13th of August, I believe. Yes. Um, I mean, you have quite you have quite a few shows. But yeah, um, I'm looking forward to the Blackpool Tower because obviously, you know, being from Blackpool, like I said, it is mm. a, just a wonderful venue. Yeah, no, it's quality. I've run some interesting venues in Blackpool. You know, I, I did the Winter Gardens. We, you know, I did a show in partnership with Blackpool Bid, which was a free show. Um, and it turns out we kind of got the vibe that was a lot more people going to be turning up uh, than we expected. So I put, put about three, four seats out, which only cover half the room in the Winter Gardens. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we should put rest of the seats out. And I'm like, nah, you better count capacity then. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone passed <laughs> in the, the capacity for their room, you know, as as far as like what we, they were supposed to have, you know, it was, it was got about two and a half, three thousand in, which is probably about half that when WWE run it. But if when you tell people free show, you know, hey. everyone, everyone turns up. I did one in... Um, in Preston Flag Market, the one where we had the Dudley Boys uh, Armed Forces Day and they're on the time. Yeah. Uh, we've got about 6,000. Oh, God. Uh, yeah. I remember watching <laughs> a show. Um, we did a show in, in the Preston Town Centre. Oh, my God, it was so funny. Like, the wrestlers, I can't remember who it was, but they went into home bargains and everything. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, it was so funny, John. Yeah. <laughs> was yeah, there, yeah. That was a great show. Well, that home bargains thing, and we do that every year, you see. Uh, yeah. A couple of years before that with Nando's, we had the hooligans throwing food at each other and all these people. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that's why when you watch the whole bargains video, all the Nando's stuff charged to the door going, no, 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 because that's next door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, part, it's partly organised by the council, that one. Um, mm. And the council is going to me. So home bargains, no, don't they? They're in agreement with this. Oh, yeah, yeah, they're, they're banged <laughs> on about it. <laughs> yeah. 
So they were brawling up and down the aisles and then slamming each other on the tills. <laughs> you got the wall knocks all going, Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, whatever. Uh, the um the one in Blackpool, the thirteenth, is it mm. true that you're doing a live tape in there as well? Uh, well, I say a live taping. It's a live taping because everything's edited together instantly. It doesn't uh, mean with live broadcast, if that's what you're well, okay. implying. Yeah. Um, because I know you've, you've got a few shows in Sky now. Which, yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's so good to have British wrestling back on TV. Yeah. Obviously, I know we have NXT UK, but it's just it's good to have more wrestling, you know, on TV. Yeah, well, I've, during lockdown, I've really invested in all the kit. We've got a complete new set of cameras. I got this fancy desk thing where all the cameras wire in. You can live edit and broadcast shows. Um, so we're going to be going back to doing eye pay per views this year. That's why I partner mm. with the Fight Network. Uh, so we'll have loads more options to do things. In Blackpool Tower, though, you can't even get a phone signal because you're all under <laughs> a big steel structure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can't do nothing. I can't even get a text message, you know. So there is no chance of any sort of <laughs> news whatsoever in there. Such a cool venue, but you can't, yeah. Yeah, and then and then the other room's more not even worth the hassle either. Right? Cause that other room, the, that emperor, the, the ballroom one, that looks beautiful. But there's a lift, and it's the same size of a telephone box, and that's how you get all your stuff up and down. But it takes about a week. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's <laughs> small, isn't it? <laughs> that's not worth the hassle either. Um, and then uh, you've also got your tenth year anniversary show. Um, yeah. So you got it in the new venue that used to be the Fog and Bucket. I believe it's not the problem book here. It's called yeah, a Reva uh, Showbox. It's, yeah, it's changed now, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, um yeah, all, all's about eight hundred. It used to be a massive bingo hall. Mm. It's a nice venue and everything. Uh but there's still a slight chance that we can get evoked. Um I keep peppering the owner of the building with emails to try and let me rent it off them. Yeah, so, so what happened that? Because you had that for ever since I can remember, and then you kind yeah. of stopped using that venue. No, no, the nightclub chain that had the venue was gone the nightclub yeah. rents it off uh, oh, this right, rigged okay. dates. so I'm now trying to rent it for a week off right. them so we'll see what yeah. happens it's a beautiful Fingers venue with the, with the lights at the top as well well that's the thing right I, I know them lights they'll be ripped out um, but the floodlights that went above that lit the ring for wrestling boxing they were mine uh, so I've took them out there in the gym oh, yeah. all the chairs and the t- um, or when we had tables white collar anything they were mine so they're sat in my gym uh, the entranceway obviously is mine. I've got sound systems, light systems. <laughs> I've got everything I need. So if I can get all of the keys for that place and negotiate a deal that works, then yeah, we'll, we'll go in there for a one-off because I just like to say goodbye to the venue. And then if nobody takes it, we've had this one send-off show. If so, if, if, you know, if someone does take it, then we'll go back there anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's going to be an exciting year for uh, PCW. Well, I can't see many people wanting to rent a nightclub in this kind of culture. That's, <laughs> Climate over. Well, yeah. How did the uh, TV deals come about? Did they approach you, or were you? Uh, I just, I'm, pepper, TV? I'm a chancer. I just pepper everyone with emails. Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm a promoter, aren't I? You got to chase leads, aren't you? Chase. You know, yeah. you got, at one point, you know, before the pandemic, we were sponsored by Smith's Toys. You know, you just got a chancer. <laughs> we love that. Yeah. So, obviously, they sell their figures, but <laughs> but no, no, no. <laughs> You've got to do all sorts. So, you know, I don't know if you remember the chain, That's Entertainment. Uh, we used to have mm. them stocking our DVDs and we used to do all right off that. You know, we, mm. we've always kind of reached out to try and make deals happen. That's why we've always got all these other things going on. Um, I don't sit back. I'm forever. I'm a, I, I really can't switch off. I'm always thinking of what about this? What about that? You know, what can I do? Anyway, it's to kind of like expand the brand. Has there been any opportunity or any point where something just completely crashed and burned or it's just not gone the way you thought it had um yeah i think the first time we we're on tv basically they promised us right it's going to be this much money with fire network for sound so i booked these professional production crew uh expecting that i'm going to get all this money up front they went oh no we'll only pay you after it i'm like what you want to do a year's worth of tv you're not going to pay me till after it <laughs> Uh, to which I got a bit of money off them because I'm like I'm not giving you any footage for <laughs> we've got a bit of money so I could clear like the first lot that's like at the camera crew and then we've just kind of winged it ourselves in time being um, but now we're ready we've upgraded our kits uh, everything's the 
um, you know, I'm excited when we actually do go back because then we, we do have the, we've got all the cameras now, uh, we've got you know the editing software and the editing desk, you know, everything will be so much better. Um, invested, we've got a new ring, new mics, everything's new, you mm. know, everything's fancy and ready to go. We can't wait. Um, which we've got a WWE size ring, twenty foot. Nice. Nobody in the country yeah. really uses them. Uh, obviously, because I use bigger venues mostly, you know, it's good. Mm. Who's been like your your favorite kind of person to work with, wrestler or all? kind of um, favorite person to work with? I don't know. Uh, let's see. Do you know what the best the best one are actually is like like exceeding expectation, like Terry Funk. Um, do you know he, he were amazing? Just like a really warm guy, really attentive. It's a, you know, mm. just really engaging, just like next level. You know, I, I was so chuffed to actually have Terry Funk come in. Uh, he, he he was he, he was brilliant. You know, some people I'm that busy that I don't actually get to talk to as many of the talent that you you, you think. Um, which especially I have Greg Lambert who like writes and books the shows, so he's the one engaging with the talent mostly, telling them everything that's going on. Uh, and I'm just basically running around double checking all the different areas, but you know, <laughs> I don't actually stop much on the show there. Is there anyone that you haven't had that you would want to get soon or uh, in the future? I always wanted it's not now, it's probably ships probably shall sail now, but, but ages ago I wanted a Wade Barrett because obviously the Preston person from Preston, mm. you know, we kept trying, mm. we kept trying, but it wasn't first class flies. I'm not flying Northern on a five gram flight. I'm sort of not knowing the front press. That's not <laughs> <how it is. laughs> we, tried, we, tried. We, we blagged it with council saying, oh, we'll give you a keys to the city and everything. We got like, well, <laughs> we tried like, everything. <laughs> we weren't having it. <laughs> no, five gram flight. Oh, forget it. <laughs> it's not going to sell that many tickets. You, you say you're a bit of a chancer. <laughs> I feel like the next thing for you is like a Netflix documentary. I feel like about PCW. Oh God knows, God knows. Yeah, that's it. Well, there's all sorts. Uh, we've jumped on board with this government scheme at the moment, where like they give me all these staff, this kickstart thing. So I've got eight yeah. staff starting with me, uh, and the government pays the wages for 25 hours a week. Okay. Uh, so, so I'm gonna have this little army of like eight people every day, <laughs> postering towns and all sorts. <laughs> which I've got that coming up now. Uh, which will be good. It motivates me to do something during the day and everything. Because uh, I, I can just sit there with my laptop and just kind of lose days really easily rather than actually going out and actually being active. Uh, I'm, I mostly work like a couple of nights a week I do doors uh, and that kind of gives me a little bit of a side income, you know. Uh, but mostly like PCW is my full-time wage, mm. you know. <laughs> so if I am like motivated to actually go out and do a bit more, uh, you know, it'll pay its rewards. Do you have any um, any big stars that, you can, that come into PCW uh, this year, anyone? I've, well, uh, we've got Doug Williams back, you know, Jody Flash. People have announced, but I've not booked anyone from out of the UK. I've not even booked anyone from out, out of England, really. Out of Scotland, out, out of, you know, you can't. Nobody can fly in. Um, I'm not promising anyone any work when it's just going to be a headache. They're going to be excited yeah. to come to the UK. They're going to pepper me head with loads of messages. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I know it's going to get cancelled or moved or whatever. Because when a lot of times when you book people, um, obviously they're like the really experienced guys, you know, the ones who are like world travelers, they're so used to it. Uh, the ones who aren't used to it as much, like the indie guys, they might be like red hot in America. They're, they're excited, you know, but it's great, you know, it's a compliment on that, but they'll pepper me with messages. <laughs> uh, and I'm not being absolutely peppered with messages, putting hours and hours of effort into it, you know, to for it to be like right, no one can come in yet. So until we get the green light, I'm not really interested in anyone who's not going to be able to make my shows. Hmm. Do you think you'd ever do like a European tour or something along the lines? Uh, I've been putting it on Twitter. Uh, I've been putting it on Twitter, just a chance to type thing, saying hmm. that uh, not the European tour, but saying I'd love to partner up with some European promotions. You know, hmm. if I can partner up with a few European promotions, just to just to give some of my lot some experience, you know, like Yes to Reese, Joe Years and all that, yeah. lot, send, them, send them to like Portugal, Italy, Spain, you know, I might talk along for a weekend with some of them. <laughs> but no, it's just good to kind of <laughs> expand the brand. When I'm trying to do international streaming deals and things like that, because that's what I'm, I'm going to try this year with like iPay-per-views and things, because I own all the equipment, 
then we can charge 99p to stream an event. It's not an issue. You know, it's all about the numbers, which I think there's about 4 million subscribers on Fight TV. So the numbers are there for them to promote to. But I just want to get PCW's name out there again, saying, look, this is a new PCW. Yeah. You know, mm. get people's eyes on the product. If you're partnering up with someone that's, say like in Italy, there's one promotion, because there's not as many promotions over there. You know, everyone's going to be looking at this one promotion, but then they'll, if they partner with me, they're then going to look at me. It's just stuff, I don't know. It, it makes sense to me, so we'll give it a try. <laughs> I, I can only try. Definitely worth a go. That's it, nothing to lose. Yeah. Um, uh, I was going to say, who, um, who's your favourite promotion in the UK? Because you have some big names like um, ICW, mm. um, you have the people down in Norwich. I mean, who's your kind of standout favourite at the moment? It's really hard. It's really hard because Progress have been doing stuff and fans have been getting angry with them. Uh, your ICW, which when WWE's bought into these promotions, don't get me wrong, they're still you know, very good commercial entities, but don't know, they've lost that kind of like unique buzz factor a little bit, uh, mm. which I see yeah. always have a lot of love for because they do things differently and it works, which most of the yeah. time someone does it differently, it doesn't work. Um, but it's hard to say who your favourite promotion is because I'm like mega competitive. I'm trying to be better than yeah. anybody else. So it's like, can't really favourite somebody else when you try to better everyone. <laughs> uh, like... Obviously, you said you've had the UK hooligans. Mm. Do you ever get? Do you, do you ever swap notes with uh, the mates and kind of what's working for you, and they tell you what's working for them? No stuff like that. Not really. No, no. So no, I don't really. I never swap notes. <laughs> what I do, uh, I'm a watcher. I'm looking on Insta. I'm always looking what people are doing. If people do something that's a bit different, I'll watch it. You know, if talent are a bit different, I'll watch them. And I'll see and I'll learn and if it's something that I can add to PCW or tweak with PCW, um, I'll do it. But most of the time, uh, I just come up with my own ideas that aren't done anywhere else in the country, which white like the wrestling. Or when I run in these giant yeah. venues, like two, three thousand seat arenas like Preston Gildall, three shows, I spare the booking fee, you know. But then obviously the venue's getting the booking fees in because it's their website. Uh, mm. So then they'll give us a cut of that and then pay and then like I cut the bar because they're getting all this money coming in you know it's all about different ways to make money and different ways to kind of do it you can't just sit back and w work off the traditional models uh just like just like a nightclub you know when a nightclub you know it might be a fiver in but I guarantee no one pays a fiver in there's always a voucher or this or that or come in now you know mm. it's happy hour you, you just got to work like that uh you just got to do what you can to get bums on seats really you know, you said before about WWE and just not clicking with the audience. Mm. What do you think isn't? What do you think it is that's just not working? And like, what would you do to change the brand? To fingers, right? They are making so much money. Um, when some, when you're making more and more and more money, they're not going to care what we think. You know, they're, they're not. There's not a lot you can change. Uh, which I watched Raw last night for the first time in a while. And I've actually seen that they're doing a hell of a lot more little backstage skits and promos and things and that try to get the characters across a bit more, which is better. You know, you, you actually get to know characters more than that way, uh, which there was a lot. Of, so you need that variety show. They've got wrestlers who can go out there and wrestle on another level. And they're not letting them do that, you know. Like, you've got NXT, which personally, I would have... NXT is the first hour of Raw, you know, or have it as the middle hour of Raw, and then mm -hmm. that way you could have all, you could have less wrestlers on Raw, so to speak, because you could have people work like the storylines of the first half of the show, and then the payoffs to the storylines of the second half of the show, if you want to do a three hours worth of Raw. Mm -hmm. You know, there's different things you could do, and then you could have an hour, you know, there's all sorts you could do. But at the end of the day, they're like the front runners, they're the ones making billions, so I couldn't really criticise what they do, you know, because the they yeah. know what they're doing, but at the same time, I don't know. It's just it's weird. It's weird. I don't think until Vince hands over the reins, we're going to see any drastic changes in WWE. And then who knows? Will it get better? Will it get worse? You really don't know, do you? You know, it's better the devil you know, and it, you know, it's it'll be interesting what happens after that. Yeah. What was it for you that kind of 
made you fall in love with wrestling? It was like a, a certain wrestler, like a certain moment, a certain WrestleMania. No, no, I, well, I'm like, I'm, I'm 37, 38, you know, in May. Back when I was a kid, everybody watched WWE. You'd be in the playground at school with your WWE stickers, every single kid, you know. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, everyone, all of them plastic figures, the Hasbro figures, everyone. That's when wrestling was absolutely mental, you know. So I just never really drifted out of it. So, you know, all, all the time I just yeah. carried on watching it. I had a couple of friends who watched it. Uh, that's it. And if you've got a couple of friends as you're growing up who watch it and they still watch it and you still watch it, it just went like that, and I never actually drifted away from wrestling. Uh, so it's not really a specific moment that sucked me in. Just, right. I, I was there from five, six year old when everyone actually adored like Hulk Hogan, you know, everything, Ultimate Warrior, all that, and it was like the golden era, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, that's similar to, similar to us, John. Like, yeah, before we knew what we was watching, Hulk Hogan was on TV, and then as we got older, we realised it was Hulk Hogan. And we kind of just grew into wrestling and watching SmackDown live every Saturday. And it just, yeah, we just kind of, it was a part of our childhood and we never really, we never really got over <laughs> it, did we? Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, um, well, it. Was, sorry, go on. No, it's all right. I was going to say, obviously, well, Miles better back then. You know what I mean? Before the internet, before social media, you know, yeah. it, it, that, that was, that was it, you know. Which I do, like, well, I'm, I'm showing my age, but I, it used to be on Sky Movies, the WWE pay-per-views back then. Was, yeah. <laughs> way before Sky Sports even come around, you know. I mean, <laughs> this is John's favourite saying, but he, you describe it as a magician, you know, cutting the strings of, like, the internet and the kayfabe. Mm. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Fans just need to relax sometimes, separate themselves, not overanalyze stuff. You know, yeah. they do, they just get too deep. Um, get too personal, you know. Oh, just enjoy yourself, enjoy the show, relax. It just separate your imagination for a couple hours. Uh, sometimes people just struggle with that, you know. Which don't get me wrong, it, it is engaging, but they, they just want to be, make it too engaging. And uh, instead of just relaxing and just taking it in. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Mm. Definitely. Um, I said, the dynamic of when, like, when you're talking about like KFib was big and it wasn't always as widespread known how wrestling works. Yeah, I think that's the, that's what struggles now because people can't adapt no. to what we know about wrestling now and enjoy what you're seeing. Yeah, well, I think that's the problem. To, to be honest, right, I've got two stepsons. One's nine, one's five. If you actually asked them. They couldn't, I, I, the nine year old might be able to tell me a bit, but they can't still out and out tell me that wrestling is not real, you know, that it, it's mm. not an actual real combat sport. They're not sure. Yeah. You know, so there's still that magic there. It's just when you get to that age and then they start researching wrestling properly on the internet, and all of a sudden they see all these people arguing on Twitter about everything. All oh, the feet look silly, <laughs> and all the on, which are ripping it all mm. apart. And then, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. Just, you just take it in, which, but sometimes you know, I just, yeah, it is a bit too polished at the moment. That you know, like WWE wrestling in general. Yeah, you know, it's not gritty, it's not gritty enough sometimes. You know, which I mean, mm. five year old nine year, I'm sorry, but they sit there playing Grand Theft Auto. You know, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll turn it down. You know, but. <laughs> The, the kids these days, they're all exposed to the internet. They're all exposed to everything. You know, there's, you can't, it's only because obviously WWE's got some mega deals with some massive kind of like networks and everything. Like look at the Peacock stuff now with the censoring everything. You know, it's, yeah. uh, it's just a sign of things to co come, you know. This culture now, it's like, well, let's tear these statues down. Let's do that. Let's do and Everyone's like just trying to cover up history rather than just accept that that was, the, that was funny back then, you know. But that's the thing. Yeah. If, you, if you if you hide it, you can't um, learn from your mistakes and then go forward. Exactly, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's it. That's what I mean. We, we, we've all done things that you know wasn't accepted. Now at the back <laughs> then, it was more than normal. Yeah, you know? yeah it, 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 I think like 
Yeah, most of the attitude of it is probably going to have to be deleted because <laughs> yeah. it just wouldn't be acceptable to go on TV now. That's it. You've got a godfather, and it never clicked with it when you were a little, when you were a kid or whatever, <laughs> that he's actually you know, the no. friends and prostitutes out. You know, <laughs> they, they never, well, you've got Val Venus, who's a porn star. Yeah, and, some of Val Venus's promos were so risque. <laughs> To, it, to me, it never really registered, you know, like 1998, no. I was still at high school, and even then it didn't register me, but it registered fully, but me, that's that character. You could buy a Godfather toy figure, it wasn't like it wasn't... Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't imagine buying your kid a pimp figure to play with, <laughs> would you? Yeah, who's them girls, the, the, the horse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's... This has got away with a lot more back then, but, but now... Yeah. Everyone's still aware of everything. You can't hide it, like I said about the Grand Theft Auto thing. You know, so, but they're just oversensitive about everything, you know. Oh, this might be taken the wrong way. That I think it all started going that way when they had the Muhammad Hassan character uh, and then they mm. taking him off TV because he had so much potential. But, oh, yeah, it's too real, this. Uh, yeah. and, so, and that's, that's when yeah. it started getting a bit too much. Um, John, do you have any final questions before we wrap up? Um, I was just going to quickly ask about Ring of Honor because yeah. did you used to have a partnership? With yeah, them? yeah, yeah. Well, we did like two years of shows uh, and then almost a third year uh, mm. with that kind of falling apart, which what it was, I, I was supposed to pay for the flights and come in and the wages and then they come and do a show of pieces. We well, four mm. shows over a weekend. And on that final one, uh, they, they mentioned me going, would you mind if we the week before, we go do a show in London. And I went, well, if you're paying half the flight, no problem. So we agreed. So I'm in Magaluf on holiday. I look at my phone and it's announced PCW, not PCW, so Ring of Honor, Liverpool, uh, which really wound me up because it was the same day as PCW in Liverpool. And I'm like, we're supposed to be partners. I shouldn't be reading about this stuff online. And then they were like, oh, we'll shit, right. well, like, how? And I went, you know, what we'll do on just <laughs> so I run against them in Liverpool. Um, mm. I drew like in a 300, 400 venue, 400 capacity venue. I think I drew about 250 fans. Uh, and they run the that ball, that whatever it was, the Olympia. Uh, in a venue that holds 1500, mm. they had about <laughs> 250 fans as well. So I know you lost out money, you know, lost money doing that. But there was no need, there was no need for it. So yeah. it could have been a good partnership because the first couple of years were successful. However, they promised me loads that they'll take PCW talent over and put them on Ring of Honor TV. Uh, and it just never mm. happened. So all my talent were getting a bit disgruntled with it anyway. Because you yeah. can't make them promises and it doesn't happen. You know. Yeah. But do now, you think you'd I, ever would you ever do a partnership with a similar company? Or is that kind of tarnished over? Oh. Well, I did straight away. So what I did then, I did some. I did um, I basically scrapped the Ring of Honor shows, and within two weeks, set up this thing was a uh, World Championships, um, which this is how quick I, what, you know, I'm watching everyone, watching everything that's going on. So these World Championships, I partnered up with Beyond Wrestling, WXW, and CZW. So we were like four people from each company, two everywhere, two cruisers. But we had Joey Janela, we had Keith Lee. You know, we had um, Desmond Xavier and basically everyone in this actual show is now signed. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it was mental. You know, and that, that, that it, that's how quick we kind of swapped it all around. And that. don't get me wrong, it, it got good numbers. It didn't get the numbers Ring of Honor would have done, but we made it work. You know, it was, it was different. It was unique. It was quality. I'd love to do it again, but it, it costs loads, you know, don't, you know, to do. Yeah. When you're finding all these people from our world. And nobody had heard of a Keith Lee back then. And no one knew who he was. Mm. Keith Lee had barely worked anywhere. He was in a tag team in in Ring of Honor part-time at that point with, with uh, Shane. I can't remember his name. But, yeah, it, it, all these people, Joey Janela, no one knew who Joey Janela was. Um Desmond Xavier and Zachary Wentz, who the rascals from Impact Wrestling now in WWE, they they were rookies. They had not worked anywhere except CZW, um, and they were like Zach Wentz was only like eighteen months, two years in. He was like a real natural at wrestling. He hadn't worked anywhere, uh, you know. And it, it's just it's just knowing who to bring in, uh, which I know who's got talent. Just watching a video for a couple of minutes, 
I never sit there and watch full matches. I never have done. All these people send me all these matches. I don't. I watch a promo and I watch highlight reel and I know if you work for me. Yeah. I mean, it, like I say, it just comes down, to, come down to experience and it, it seems like you've always kind of have your finger on the button. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Everyone like, like WWE NXT UK is PCW 2016. <laughs> like the British guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean... Right. The band's put Rampage and Demon together at some point, aren't they? You know, just, yeah. you've, got Lev, you've got Mastiff, you've got Ashton Smith, there's loads. It's just, yeah, yeah it, it's crazy. You know, it's brilliant to see that, you know, we've been a, a stepping stone on the way with all these people's different careers. It's mental. But, you know, yeah. it's... Me and, me and John, we seen Mastiff, didn't we? Mm. I think that's when we've seen Scott Zoo Hottie, I think, as well. Yeah. Mm. But, um, yeah, we absolutely love your brand. Like... And no, uh, we're so you. happy that you've, you've uh, you know you've come on to our interview and give us your time of day. So uh, we really appreciate it. Um, no, no problem. And uh, yeah, PCW's got you know it's got a bright future. You know, uh, you got your your British uh, TV you know deals. You got the shows coming up. So uh, yeah, I mean we look forward to uh, seeing what the next few years hold for PCW. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'm 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 excited for this year because. It does. It just feels like a new start. It feels like we've got that buzz back. Everyone's yeah. interested. All these new wrestlers, which, you know, I, I do have to just tell people, trust me, because, like I say, I've always had my finger on the pulse with different people and bringing mm. in different. I brought it, I'm bringing in this, that many different people in this time. And a lot of people haven't heard of them, like uh, Priscilla, you know, Chocolate Thunder, you know, uh, Mad <laughs> Kirk. There's all these different names that people won't have seen, uh, but they've just got to trust me because, you know, they will deliver. I know they will, but. Mm. It's just that those new to the area rather than all the other, you know, a lot of companies in the northwest, they're all using like the same people. Which I, I've always shied away from that. I've always wanted to be different, you know, and that, that way it's more of an attraction, you know, more people want to come. People like different. It doesn't yeah. have to be a different style of wrestling. They just want to see different. You know, imagine if the six soaps like Coronation Street, different names, but all using the Coronation Street actors. It just do your head in it, and yeah, <laughs> you know, and that's what I'm yeah. trying to avoid. I'm just trying to, yeah. I'm just trying to have different different things for people to see. So you don't even have to be the biggest piece of the fan, but we are different to the point where, well, it's still a different night out. It's still good, you know, something for everybody, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Like I said, thank you for coming on. Uh, I really appreciate it, and um, yeah, we'll put all your details on our social media and, uh, yeah, we can't Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, cheers. Yeah, I'll, I'll come on anytime. Yeah, no, I'm not much on next. <laughs> thank <Yeah>. you. <laughs>